Justice League to Breaking News Episode 2. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. And we're here bringing the latest in you know, all the video game news that's pretty much wrapping up 2013 and giving us a very, very bright outlook for 2014, especially, of course, on the indie side as we like to promote, yeah. but in mainstream as well. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about as usual, so let's get started with uh, the first part of this episode, which is kind of dealing with kind of retro-inspired shooter platformers. Yeah. Uh, really great one that's actually exclusive to Xbox that's coming out is Super Time Force. Oh, so this one's coming out from Capybara Games, probably in the early part of 2014. So what did you kind of gather from the trailer that we saw? This is uh, the first part of our, uh, of our list here. It's a lot of really, really good uh, side-scrolling games. And the really cool feature about this game is that uh, you have the, the ability to, when you make a mistake or something goes not quite right, you can rewind things and then start from scratch again, but with another cool little twist added to it. The fact that you could actually use your past and present self and your yeah. future self to actually aid yourself, and the developers actually describe this as as single player co-op. Co -op. So, so, so to kind of break that down, so let's just say you, you die at a certain sequence, you can actually rewind go into it again and actually see your former self in the future shooting alongside with you yeah. up to like multiple versions of yourself, that, that totally is like a mind-bending new way of, yeah. of, of approaching this. I've never seen a game have that. That's a completely new element that I've never heard of and it has a really, really cool to, to what would otherwise be just a, a straightforward kind of side-scrolling shooter. Yeah, because at first, you know, I thought, okay, we've seen this in Princess of Persia, the Sands of yeah. Time, we've seen this in Braid, but like again, the fact that you're actually communicating with other versions of yourself in time is, is really incredible. You know, and it's, oh, it's going with that cool, like, the retro pixelated look, yeah. and, and I see it going head-to-head -head against Mercenary Kings, Mercenary which Kings. is going to be the exclusive to PS4. Yeah. This one was only coming out on 360. They delayed it recently so they could put it on Xbox One. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it'll be a, kind of these two, maybe even going head-to-head, -head and we'll it, uh, like I said, but that, that feature is really, really cool. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, again, for, for, for fans of 2D side-scrollers, I mean, you've got fast, frenetic action, definitely kind of like a Gunstar Heroes vibe here with just explosions, epic bosses. This one's, uh, again, coming from Capybara Games. These guys are actually also developing a game, another game for Xbox One called Below. Oh, yeah. So uh, we saw a little bit of this one. What did you think of that? Like, like some quirky stuff coming from these guys. Yeah, it's a, kind of a similar thing. It, uh, but uh, with some bigger, some bigger stuff going on, it's a, uh, it's a uh, different, some kind of different gameplay elements to it. Yeah, it reminded me of Rhyme. Rhyme, yeah. But yeah. kind of like a three quarter head. Yeah, game. but but pan back even further. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just a lot of different elements and stuff yeah, like that. A little bit, a little bit of Diablo kind of stuff going. Very, uh, like I said, a little bit of Rhyme, but uh, but. Uh, but different, you know, it's, it's not uh, like a copy of it or anything like that. That's right, it, it was funny too is that these guys actually started out their life on the PlayStation Network yeah. with another game called Critter Crunch, yeah, yeah. which is not even like yeah, it's related. it's completely different, it was like a, it, it was like Connect 4 with a, like this little, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was like a, like a little cut the rope guy catching the stuff at the bottom. Yeah, like kind of that typical hand-drawn cartoon yeah. style style. But so that's completely different. Yeah, whereas the time, Super yeah. Time Force, they're going completely like retro pixel art, yeah. uh, fast frenetic action, so, and they're aligning themselves with Xbox. I mean, this, yeah. they were one of the featured developers in that list of like 30 plus developers that are signing on with Microsoft. I, I believe that the first games of the gate are gonna start coming out in March, where, where I would expect to see Super Time Force probably coming out in early spring along with a lot of the other big stuff. So that's coming from Capybara Games somewhere in quarter one of 2014, only for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Moving on with the kind of side-scrolling um, action brawler genre, a big reboot coming. Strider. Yes. Yeah. A remake of the original Strider done for next gen coming from Double Helix and Capcom. Yeah. So just, what, what is this, is this going to hopefully help bring Capcom out of the depths? I, I think so. You know, when I, when I first saw this game, immediately like Shinobi. <laughs> yeah, that's like right. he, the guy even gave me. Looks like Shinobi. He even stands there, like like just like Shinobi. Absolutely. And uh, it it, uh, it it looks really cool. There's a uh, it's a uh, 
Yeah, it's it, it, it is kind of like an HD kind of reboot of, of this game. It is. I mean, but, if you've ever played the old Genesis, but it's not like a straight up copy of everything. It's no, it's definitely uh, you know it's it, it it looks a lot better. There are some kind of different. Uh, you're building yourself up and yeah, like I, I remember I didn't play the original one like yeah. heavily, but I mean I can already tell just from the gameplay we saw that I mean there's a lot of cool new power ups you can yeah. do. Um, very, very kind of heavy, big, badass brawler style. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on on the ground, a lot of heavy slashing, fast frenetic gameplay, and you also notice uh, the combo meter. Yeah, the, the combo meter, and there's even some other stuff, like it, there's, uh, it's not just all, on just one flat plane, you know, there's some other kind of levels, and you're actually able to walk underneath and, and attack these guys from uh, from underneath, you know, it's, it's not just a straight up. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, it's got like a lot of those those hardcore Capcom tropes too. Oh, yeah. I mean, like again, going getting back to the combo meter, the whole idea that the the more chain kills you can do, you can start building up to, to special powers. So I definitely see this uh, being fans of, especially hard games like Shinobi, yeah. those classic hack and slash grinders. Uh, this one's coming out somewhere in 2014. We said this is coming from, from Double Helix. They're also famous for a pretty famous Xbox One launch game. Which one was that? That was Killer Instinct. That's yeah, Killer right. Instinct. They, they brought up Killer Instinct for Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, they're, and they're also the uh, the makers of Front Mission Evolved yeah. and, and a few other things. So this, this uh, you know, this, I, I'm just wondering now, when we were watching this trailer, you, you kind of, you, you seemed a little, uh, you seemed a little confused as to whether this was going to be still relevant in this day and age. Like, Strider is an old game that came out like in 1990, 91. Do you think this is still going to have the same impact today as it did then? Uh, we'll see. I, I think it will. I think so, like fans of Shinobi and that kind of stuff, you know, they'll be drawn because I mean, it's, it's. I don't think that there's any kind of remake of Sh Shinobi kind of coming out. So this will attract some of those guys. Yeah. And then we'll see how it do, how it uh, comes out. I mean, Killer Instinct was it was pretty quiet when it came out. It so is. I mean, you, you kind of figured they would have gotten a little bit, uh, but but our best. But I think Strider's got that cachet. I mean, it's one of those oh, franchises yeah. we haven't seen in a long time. And other than Moon Diver, I haven't really seen anything like Strider in the current yeah. gen. So if you ever played Moon Moon Diver. It's basically like a JRPG yeah. successor to it, but I'd say a little bit more. Like there's, there seems a little bit more to it. Like you can do experience points, upgrade your powers. So yeah. it'll, it'll remain to see if Strider can kind of reach that level. Yeah. Um, but that seems to be kind of like Capcom's thing to do right now. I mean, especially looking at the the, the uh, success of Ducktales Remastered, yeah. and now we've heard that they're going to be doing Chippendales Dales Rescue Rangers. Maybe that's the way they have to go. Start yeah. reminding their own catalog. Yeah, and that, 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 that'll definitely appeal to the fans of the game. Absolutely, get back to its roots. Yeah, I'm all for it. So that's Strider. That's uh, kind of a digital download somewhere in 2014. Uh, keep it up with the fast, frenetic kind of Japanese action. This is one that's coming out straight for Wii U. This is Bayonetta 2 from Platinum Games, who was famous for uh, Wonderful 101, and of course, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So what did you see from this Wii U exclusive? I was surprised this week, because I mean, this came out for, uh, Came out for Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, the first was, Bayonetta, uh, yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if the first one came out for uh, the original. Yeah, I think it did. No, it didn't. It just PS3, Xbox okay. 360. So but I, I, was, I was surprised to see it just Wii U exclusive. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, uh, you know. Do you think this is gonna? Do you think this is gonna speak to people who are getting to the Wii U? Like looking at the type of people who are getting into that kind of system, is this speaking to their demographic right now? Or well, is this you know, the main demographic for the Wii U, I mean, really, it is for a younger audience. But, you know, maybe a game like this can draw some of those other people in. That's yeah. what I'm hoping for, because they need that on, that, on, on the Wii U. They, they need the more hardcore adult experiences yeah. to kind of complement the Marios, the Zeldas. And what I like about this is that it, it doesn't seem like it's over-the-top gory, more about fast, frenetic comic book style yeah, it's action. very, very quick, very, very fast-paced. Yeah. A lot of motion, yeah. like you're, you're like doing battle oh, on yeah. jet planes and stuff. And it, it just again, I think this is going to be another one of those exclusives that's going to it's going to grab the older gamers and, and you know possibly justify that in their eyes if, you, if you're getting sick of the family friendly games. Something else to try here. Yeah. Uh, what else can we say about that? So that's uh, kind of exclusively for the Wii U from creator Hideki Kamiya, who actually brought us the original Devil May Cry. So you're going to see uh, you know elements of that. You can obviously see that in the trailer here. Anyway, that's Bayonetta 2. Uh, Kind of sticking with, again, the Japanese mythology, hardcore action. Samurai Gun, what do you think about this trailer? This one's coming out from Techno Pants and Magzistentialism. Yeah. Out now on the PC, coming soon to PS4 and Vita. PS4 and Vita, yeah. This is, you know, from uh, what I can see, this is basically, yeah, it's like Samurai Towerfall. 
that's pretty much it. Exactly. It's, 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 it's going to appeal to the audience. Like I said, this appeals to, to like people that are fans of like Smash Brothers. It's going to be like a good, quick, fixed multiplayer game for you to just beat up your buddies and, and uh, do that kind of stuff. That's that's what this game is going to be about. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of going back to our first episode of Breaking News, we yeah. talked about Towerfall Ascension. Um, I would say this is even like more fast and frenetic. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just very, one hit kills. Very gory and just oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. It's it's going to be it's going to be like that. Well, you noticed a kind of a comparison to Super Meat Boy in, yeah. in terms of like what was that? Can well, I explain on that? Well, because I mean, it, like it, it's you know, it's, if any of you guys have played Super Meat Boy, you know, as he's going along, like, there's like there's pieces of him like sticking all over the place. Trails of blood. And, yeah, and there, there's there's plenty of that in this game. It's like a trail of cookie crumbs. It, yeah. it shows you where you've been in the yeah. level, <laughs> and it kind of gives you an idea. But this is more just for 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 graphic blood's sake. Like you just see but, corpses laying there and puddles of blood where you finished off your enemies. Well, maybe yeah, if that's a place where you're gonna die, you. you I got that reminder of the game, maybe I won't go back. This might not be such a great idea. Right last time, so it, it gives you those kind of... Yeah, and there's tons of maps you can tell from the preview. I mean, lots of ways to keep this fresh. It's an MOBA, so, you know, there's always... It's it's one of those quick fix kind of games you can jump into for like 10 minutes, get a crazy kill-death ratio, and be done with it. But, you know, it, it seems like these kind of... These MOBA, very simple kind of games are coming the style right now for, yeah. you know, maybe like a new kind of casual genre. So, Samurai Gun, um, now, out now on PC and Steam, but coming out not for Xbox, but for PS4 and Vita. So I'm looking forward to actually have that on Vita. Yeah, I think this, is, this would be a really, really great game for like mobile gaming on the go. That is, it's a good fit for the PS4 too, but uh, for, for mobile, I think that's going to be a... That's going to be a cool fit for that console. There's, I don't think there's too much of that on there. So oh, absolutely. Be a, a nice fit for that. Yeah, so that's, a, that's one to look forward to. Probably coming soon in the new year. Moving on to some 3DS exclusive stuff. Mm. This next one's called Treasure Knots from Renegade Kids. What can you tell us about Treasure Knots that you saw from that trailer? Uh, it's a, uh, you know, it, it's if from the makers of uh, Mutant Mud Deluxe. Mutant Mud Deluxe, yeah. It's a, uh, it's gonna be one of those games where it's, uh, you know, it's it's like your, your traditional kind of side scrolling uh, kind of game, but I think it's gonna. It's gonna to appeal to the people on the 3S. I mean, it's it's a, it seems to be a popular kind of uh, genre on that console. Yeah, I think it's it, from what I saw in the trailer. It seems like one of those deceptively simple games. Like it, it reminded me a lot of Kirby. Like very slow, deliberate, yeah. like classic platforming. But I haven't actually played Mutant Must Dogs, but I, mm -hmm. what I hear, it's actually a very difficult game. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I like what I see in this trailer, like the, it, it's, it's definitely for fans of like Borderlands or like uh, all these other kind of like smash and grab, you know, loot, looting kind of games. There's lots of stuff to collect. Really feels like an, like an NES Capcom game. Like I, I totally felt like I was watching DuckTales or Chippendales. Yeah. Even when you got attack, you see like Jules was coming. Oh yeah, and these these yeah. great rendered epic bosses that are yeah. kind of cartoony. So something for the younger set, but also something for all you old schoolers who love your platformers yeah. a little bit more hardcore. Again, don't be fooled by the simple mechanics of what you're yeah. seeing here, especially with Mutant Month Deluxe. You know, there obviously sometimes you can have like the most you know sinister gameplay experiences yeah. in a simple package. Yeah, it's definitely gonna not just appeal to one demographic. It's gonna to appeal to some to. to to a fair amount of people. Yeah, and you know what? This is the kind of thing that the 3DS needs, like these little like indie games. Like the 3DS really took off this year, and, and I think the fact that I was that surprised by that actually. Absolutely, I think the whole industry is surprised yeah. at how the 3DS turned itself around. It did not start off well. It did not. And you know what? I think a lot of it had to do with the eStore. You know, just the fact right. that you could get virtual console games. That you, like, you know, and, and even like the fact that, you know, Earthbound on Wii U is actually getting people to buy a Wii U. I think yeah. Nintendo like really hit their stride with that e-store and I think just by bringing more indie titles like this and eventually Ballpoint Universe, you're going to see some really cool stuff to come and compete with Steam I hope and so. PSN, yeah. especially that this is exclusive. Yeah. So that's uh, Treasure Knots. Uh, moving on, we also got some more retro infused stuff for fans of Terraria. This is called Starbound from Chucklefish. This is their first game out of the gate. This is in beta right now on PC. Yeah. Looking to stay on PC. What can you tell me about Okay, so not tell me what you saw about this, but what if you if you're into Terraria, what would make you want to play Starbound as well? It, it's it definitely it's it's similar to Terraria and kind of the look. And from my initial impression, you know, we watched a couple different uh, trailers on this. But the second one we watched really kind of showed me some of the other elements. It, it's it. Uh, I think uh, people are going to want to do a bit more multiplayer on this because you're you're actually grouping together with people to to build. Right? Yeah, you're, 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 you're not just focused, you're, it's not just attacking or kind of just being off by yourself. It, it's it's actually it looks like it's going to be an encouraging group play. It's it's as if you like hired your own 
contracting team yeah. to build something in Minecraft. That's exactly like that's that's what I felt like yeah. when you're when you're inside the space station, and, and it seems like it's going to be more complex than Terraria in the sense you know Terraria you have your cave, you put your torches, your crafting table, but in this you're making like these crazy crafting yeah. machines, sci-fi crafting machines. Who knows what kind of equipment you'll be able to make? And just the fact that again that you've got a community coming together to design this 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 large structure, I think it's really going to bring people together it's in be more a more way. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think the emphasis on this one is about battle. I think it's about again about getting people together and just kind of surviving. Yeah, absolutely. So Starbound's in beta right now. You can actually go to uh, playstarbound.com and get the beta right now and start testing it out and see what it's about. To finish off part one, kind of switching gears a little bit, but staying in the strategy realm. Frozen End Zone. Frozen End Zone. So this one's coming up from Mode Seven Games. The guys who brought us uh, Frozen Synapse. What, what is this going to offer new to gamers? This is some, something quite unique. This is a, a turn-based strategy sports game. Based on American football rules. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, In yeah. a frozen wasteland yeah. with ran randomly generated very, very environments. Very yeah, very, so very yeah, you've got a playing field, you've got like these randomly generated structures that appear as either uh, obstacles or strategic factors. I, I don't know if this is gonna appeal outside the hardcore set. Why is that? Like, it seemed like it was a little deliberate, maybe too much. So yeah, because it, it it really does feel like you're, like you're you're playing. I mean, you're you're, you're, you're it, it is a football game, but it, it's like you're you're really really slowing down. It, it, it's 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 like you're playing chess. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it, it's and you're really really playing. You can see what what uh, optional outcomes will will come out and you can actually choose one that you want to go with. It, it's a very, very deliberate pace. Yeah, and I think that comes from the fact that you can not only like preview your own plays, like in yeah. terms of where your characters preview are going to go. Preview your enemies' plays as well. Exactly, right? You yeah. can actually set up scenarios where your enemies might move and, and think about your strategies. This is a simultaneous RTS co-op game, but it, it really feels like those mail order chess games, or like even pure chess, which yeah. came out for all platforms, where you don't play in real time, but you actually message your move, and you have all the time in the world. So again, this isn't these games will probably last hours. Oh yeah, it's it's not going to be your quick you know football game, even yeah. though it has the mechanics. Yeah, it's going to be one of those ones where it's going to be time consuming. Absolutely, yeah. and, and I don't even think and not in a bad way. Not in a bad way at all. I think I think sometimes you have to slow down, and and yeah. this is really going to bring up the strategy in you. But I don't think this is going to be something that sports fans are going to turn on to. Oh, I think this is, is going to be this is going to appeal to the the, the, the fans of, of XCOM, that kind of stuff. And even, even, even this game has like that kind of feel to it. It's a very very deliberate pace. It, it's definitely not going to appeal to like Madden fans out there, obviously. Yeah, I think it's for people yeah. like me who don't yeah. really play sports games, who would love the experience of being able to play a sports game. And I think this kind of gives you both best of both worlds. Yeah, it's it's going to. I think it's going to be kind of like bridging a gap between strategy and sports game. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of reminds me of what they did with Mutant League Football and Mutant League Hockey on the Genesis. You know, just kind of taking genres and just adding these new elements onto it. So that's on PC only. Um, stay tuned for more breaking news after the break. I'm Mike Crucios. I'm Joe Moore. This is the Joyce Justice League, and uh, stay tuned. Justice League to part two of Breaking News 002 with me, Mike Crucios, Joe Moore, and we're getting into some uh, different stuff now. We're getting into some RPGs, uh, some quirky games. Let's start off with something that has got me really excited for the Vita next year. Um, this game's getting some buzz. This one's called Freedom Wars. So this one's coming from Sony Computer Entertainment, but it was actually made in conjunction with Shift, who gave us the God Eater series, which was like basically blew the PSP and the Vita out of the water in Japan, yeah. and also. Dimps, the makers of, get this, Sonic Lost World, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance, Super Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter X Tekken, Dragon Ball Z, and Naruto. So we've got some heavy industry experience, and I can really tell that from the trailer. There's a lot of influences inspired in this game. So tell us a bit about Freedom Wars. Set this, set this up for us. No, it's a, for me, this game feels like, it's like, Prototype meets Final Fantasy. Yeah, that, nice. That's why I felt, because it's, it's, it's got your, uh, it's got your Final Fantasy type battles, but you're also 
you're going up all over the place. I mean, it, it, it's it's there, there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. Yeah, because at first you want to say, okay, well, this seems like another God Eater or another oh, or Monster Hunter. No, but I mean, you've got the platform, you've got the wall jumping, so it's bringing kind of shades of like uh, gravity rush. And also a cool story. Oh, yeah. So you, this is set in a totalitarian, totalitarian future United Kingdom where basically Big Brother's taken over. You got millions of cameras all over the place. So you, already the story I can tell is going to be pushing some buttons and especially in light of all the NSA controversy that's going on these days. Um, why are people going to play this? Like, do you think this could be something that sells Vitas? I think it definitely will. I think, uh, I think it may end up being the killer app for the Vita. Yeah, so, this, so far it's exclusive. Too. Yeah. And, and just JRPGs are like the hottest thing right now. I mean, like really, like uh, since Nino Kuni and Tales of Zillia and, and Dragon's Crown in the past year, I, I think that whole JRPG mentality, the, the, why people like to play those games is really starting to translate over to a Western audience, especially with, with the buzz that God Eater got, like the, the, what these developers worked on before. That whole Monster Hunter genre is really getting big now and Soul Sacrifice and all that kind of stuff. What I like is that it sets apart with like an actual story, it's, like an actual sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna get the beat a real kick in the pants that, that, that it needs because, because uh, you know, other than the remote, the remote play, you know, there's some good experiences on. It, but this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be a really, really killer game for the system. I think so too. I think yeah. the Vita is, is, is it's kind of finding its legs now and finding its niche. I think that it was nice to see Killzone Mercenary, you know, these these cool looking AAA titles, but really, I think Tearaway. And games like God Eater now, like these these RPGs, is really drove the Vita in Japan. I think you could drive it here too. I oh, think yeah. the RPGs are coming to season again in, in yep. the popular culture, and just the fact that it's like this future totalitarian setting, this could really blow. Yeah, it's a nice combination of, of that to have some modern day stuff thrown into the, the JRPGs. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, very, very unique. Yeah, yeah taking out the usual, you know, high school setting or fantasy yeah. setting, and it's actually, into, that like, people this. aren't going to necessarily expect. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a little, su a little surprise. Oh, absolutely. Uh, lots of great RPG stuff coming out, though. I mean, there's this really cool one coming out for Wii U, actually, an exclusive that was actually revealed recently on Nintendo Direct. It's called Hyrule Warriors. Oh, wow. Okay, so what did you see from this? The, the, this, the, this looks pretty sweet. This is basically, uh, it's like Zelda in, he's basically in Dynasty Warriors. That's pretty much it. It's yeah. just like, take you know, Ocarina of Time and throw in the Dynasty yeah. Warriors universe with like multiple enemies yeah. and like this crazy combat system yeah, yeah. and you've got this really cool new exclusive of the Wii U that I think is going to just kind of blow out of the water if it comes out like next summer or next spring. Uh, the cool. Yeah, it's going to be a nice uh, action game for, for, for the Wii U. That's, you know, even like a, obviously fans of Zelda are going to be this, but it's, it's going to be Zelda and a totally different kind of game than used to being it. Yeah, total kind yeah. of brawler, just yeah. lots of enemy sprites. And, and and just kind of I see I see what Nintendo is doing. I mean, being a badass. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and, and just taking their taking their iconic characters and putting them into different genres, yeah. which I think is what they need to keep doing. I think they've they've experimented with Mario. Now they need to try to do that with Zelda. Sure. They've done it with Metroid. Yeah. This seems to offer a lot, and uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if Koei's on board, but you know, the, the Dynasty Warriors games uh, were pretty hot for a reason, and I, and I think just putting it in the Hyrule landscape is really going to do something for Nintendo here. So, really cool stuff out there around the time that Mario 8's come, Mario Kart 8, and Super Smash Bros. Something a little bit different. Um, kind of going into a different territory now. There's this one's coming out for PS4, PS3, and Vita in conjunction. This one's called Hell Divers from Arrowhead Game Studios, the people who gave us the Magicka series on the PC360. So you kind of told me about this one. Yep. What did you kind of gather from Helldivers? This is uh, basically, it's for, you know, for people who are fans of the, the Starship Troopers uh, movies. It, it's basically, it, it's, it's an action game based in that kind of a universe. And, but the, the really, really cool thing about this is that these guys are gonna, they're gonna make it, I think they'll be successful at making cross-platform play again. True cross-platform cross cross -platform platform. play. Prop cross-platform play. Yeah. The way they, they described this was that they basically made the PS3 version and kind of down res for the Vita, up res for the PS4, and are hoping to pull off a simultaneous gameplay experience across all three platforms, which I haven't really seen yet. The closest they got to doing that was kind of Doki Doki Universe, but that wasn't even really like cross-play. This is like yeah. true simultaneous action it's it's like a twin stick shooter but it's it's not like full on frenetic action either there's a lot of exploration yeah. a lot of suspense like it, it really feels like you're like a, you're in prometheus or something like that yeah. or like you said starship troopers where you're like 
exploring this this desolate war wasteland and, and dealing with alien threats and a lot of a lot of cool atmosphere too. too. Oh yeah, and uh, but this this, cra this cross platform play if they if they pull it off, I mean it's going to bring you know it, it's you have a huge amount of gamers. You got people on PS3, PS4, Envy, it all coming together to, to play a game like this. That's going to be really sweet if they can pull this off. Yeah, and it, it could set a nice precedent for yeah. the cross play, which it, which has kind of had its growing pains. Nobody really understood what cross play meant, and, and I think this will be kind of like the testing ground. It's a hard thing to pull off. Yeah, it, it, it's not an easy thing to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about like three different processors, yeah. three different systems. But again, I think going for the middle ground by developing for the PS3 first the and going each way is the right move absolutely. to make. I think other developers can kind of take uh, a note from this one. So that's Helldivers coming out somewhere in 2014. Again, no real solid date on that, but probably springtime or something like that. Get into some quirky stuff. Uh, quirky. For, yeah, okay. Quirky is a, quirky <laughs> is a kind of an understatement. Uh, the next one. Mugenics. So you might have heard about this one. This is coming from the, same, the famed Team Meat, responsible for Super Meat Boy. This is their follow-up to Super Meat Boy, and damn, if this isn't anything like that game, it's good. This is like a like they, they, they just did like a, it's like a 180. Wow. Yeah. It, and, it, and if you're expecting something like Super Meat Boy, you're not going to get that here. I don't think this you can expect anything. No. This is basically it's a a cat lady simulator game. It is. It, it, they described it as like The Sims meets Animal Crossing meets Pokemon. It's insane, and it's so demented, and just some of these aspects of this game. Like we took a, a list of uh, the developer uh, blog on this, and like some of the, the, the stuff in this, like in the combinations of cast that you can have. It's I mean, Ed, Edmund, Edmund and Tommy. Oh, of, of Team Meat. These guys have a really Man. dark sense of humor that's just it's just original unique again you yeah. saw it in super meat boy but really their humor is and originality is going to come to play i mean think about this i mean you you're basically breeding cats but it comes like you're, you're talking about like different factors that come into play like 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 uh like psychosis yeah. and, and the proclivity to having the aids virus yeah. and growing mustaches <laughs> and, and what happens is that you have all these different pieces of furniture they said that over 750 pieces of fur specific furniture yeah. with specific magic powers have been developed for this so that when you put these pieces of furniture in your house it affects the breeding of your cat yeah. so they'll take on qualities yeah. so for instance you put like a ghetto blaster next to a cat that's playing tupac it's yeah. gonna get Start getting aggressive. You yeah, know, and he's even he's even start dressing like that later. <laughs> and then you might, and then that cat might breed with uh, like a cat with oh, herpes. Oh, oh. And then you know. have like Chris oh, Brown. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> oh, I don't know how to explain this game other than what you said. It's a crazy cat lady yeah. simulator with constant evolutions and just that quirky yeah. style that only Team Meat can bring. I think these. And what's weird about this too is that. It almost seems like they signed their life away when they signed with Microsoft. This yeah. isn't even coming to Sony or Xbox. We already know they had a bit of a rough experience making Super Meat Boy. And then when I was reading their developer's blog, I found out that they actually signed themselves away out of putting a PlayStation version of Super Meat Boy. And I think because of their negative experiences working with the console arena, that's why Eugenics right now is only being planned for iOS and PC. Yeah. You know, it's a you know, it's gonna be a game. Where, like I think you're just you're gonna constantly have a smile on your face. Like endless that. replay. I mean, oh, I think they uh, talk endless. about what was it like sixteen septillion yeah, permutations of cats that yeah. you can breed in this. You're not gonna get bored playing this. Game. Not at all. I mean, this is just laughs galore. That's Mugenics um, coming out soon. There's no real date on that one yet, but. Uh, they haven't ruled out multi-platform yet. I mean, I, no. I think you're gonna see, I think they're taking a big risk with this one. Oh, absolutely. This is nothing like Super Meat Boy. No, no, no. It's, there's, it's not like, it's not just like Super Meat Boy. I mean, I don't think there's anything out here that if it comes close. No, not even. This, this is, is like, it's, this is, it's almost it's like it's only genre. genre. Original. Absolutely, so that's, that's Mugenics coming from Team Meat. Uh, keeping on with the kind of quirky mobile, really pushing the boundaries kind of stuff, Year Walk. That's coming out from Samogu Games. It actually already came out from Samogu Games on iOS. The developers of Device 6, one of the highest rated games of 2013. Oh, yeah. Probably selling iPhones as we speak. So mm -hmm. tell us what you've played your walk. I have, yeah. What do you think? It's it, it's definitely fitting with the, the quirky uh, games here. It's a it's a very, very atmospheric, dark, creepy thing. And you're, it, it, it is, it is, you are playing on a touch screen, so you're, you're navigating by swiping across. But it's using parallax effects, you know, you're, it's not just on a single, you know, just 
looking at just one. It's a new way of using 3D. It's oh, like you're it's jumping into good. and out of layers. Yeah, and, and, and it's, uh, it's th there's so many different kind of touch elements going on here. It, it's something that uh, it's. It's it, it's a short game. Mm -hmm. If you're but you're not gonna you're not gonna whip through it. Like I think they said it's roughly about an hour of gameplay. Well, I but, be, yeah. But it, it, it's 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 gonna take you longer than that because you really really have to look around and really pay attention to what's going on and the clues and what you have to do. It's it, it, it's actually gonna be a it's not it's maybe maybe an hour long game, but it's it's a very slow and you really have to pay attention. Kind of like Device Six, where you have to really pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. To, to, to get the clues to progress on to the next part. Yeah, I mean, for anybody who complains that games hold your hand, this is one of the oh. least hand-holding games yeah. I've ever seen. This doesn't tell you anything. You just figure it out. You gotta use your brain. All the clues are purely visual. Like, I mean, there's very little, in terms of like a, like a, like a clue it's in the not text. It's not like a text with a, it's, it's, it's like Device 6, but Device 6 was giving you uh, some visual clues and audio clues, but it, it was like a text kind of thing. This is kind of almost going the other way, but just purely visual clues. Purely sublime, purely yeah. atmospheric, but uh, just Smogo is really pushing the envelope. I mean, these guys are Swedish, and, and you know, it's no surprise that this is really, like the whole crux of this game is dealing with pagan mythology. So yeah. this, I, I can already see the conspiracy theorists, Illuminati theorists yeah. kind of going crazy over this kind of stuff. They said that this game is very dark. Yeah, this is gonna go in some very dark places. Yeah. This is definitely not something for kids, but this is something that is pushing the genre, the, the boundaries of what can be done, not only on mobile devices, but in gaming. Games in and, and really just redefining the language of how we play games by just yeah. stripping away everything yeah. and getting right down to it. It's very core. Like it's almost like mist in a sense where it's just again like both the experience and less so about you know, the end goal. Like I said, this is what I've been seeing a lot on, on uh, especially on iOS, is that uh, you know, develop like some mobile games, especially if they they can take these risks uh, on, on yes. this platform. Yes. And Jesus, it's paying off. Because it's the infrastructure. I mean, there's, oh, they're man. just a small team. They're yeah. not dealing with the bureaucracy. They're not dealing with all the middlemen. They can just, it's so easy for young developers, whether it's iOS, whether it's PlayStation Mobile, whether it's Android, just to get their stuff out, take chances, and we get, and the stuff of what could define the next generation in gaming. They know they can really, really put out their actual vision. You know, with some of these other big games, you know, they're, they're kind of like, like, especially some first party developers, like they're really kind of tied to, to what they're being told that these guys, they have that complete freedom to really Carte execute blanche. their vision. Absolutely. And so this was available now. How much is this uh, on ask? This was, uh, I believe it was uh, about Three ninety nine, two ninety nine. Yeah, a bargain. Well I mean, worth it. It, it, even the developer said you're only going to get about one or two plays out of this. But it's, I think it's going to be one of those games that's just going to completely freak you out, and yeah. um, and you'll never forget. So that's on iOS right now exclusively. Mm -hmm. And to kind of finish off with the quirkiness, a new one which I uh, just showed you right now a few minutes ago from Half Brick Studios, which brought us Jetpack Joyride, mm -hmm. the phenomenally popular multi-platform indie game. This is called Colossatron. Colossatron. So this one's cool because right away it starts as like a, this breaking news, end of the world apocalypse scenario. And you know, you've got this giant robotic snake that's attacking all these US yeah. economic military bases. It, it, it's like a, instead of if uh, Godzilla would attack, it's a giant robot monster. A giant expanding yeah. robot monster. So what, what, what happens is you don't control the snake. But what happened when it's when it's wreaking havoc on the bases? You see these different colored parts show up, and you can drag them into your snake structure and either combine colors into new colors of new weapons and turrets, or do the Max Three system where you like combine three blues, get an expanded turret. Um, but you know, I mean, like this is this is different from Jetpack Joyride. Do you think this is going to have the same kind of you know splash that that Jetpack has? I, th I think it will. And, and, uh, and to touch briefly on. Keep in mind, this was a, this was a uh, very it was a uh, only this is the ninety nine cent game ninety nine cents on, 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 the, on the other store and uh, what you were saying about that you know you're you're not really controlling it but you're adding onto it it's it's almost kind of like a play on like the tower defense kind of games but in yes. a new, but in a new kind of way where you're, you're, they're not just stationary like this he's moving around around the level so it's it, it's it's kind of like tower defense but in a Kind of an interesting play on that kind of kind of a Katamari vibe. Yeah. In the sense that you're collecting it's and growing as you go. Elements in, in, in together, very very cool. And experience. no game's gonna be the, the same. I mean, it, it's gonna be randomized colors, randomized ways of customizing your snake. You can go for a long snake. You can go for like a super powered one. Yeah. But just a lot of fun. Just the way that it was designed. That the, the, the newscasters constantly commentating yeah. on what's going on. The breaking news, theme music. You know, it seems like you're watching an actual news reel of this yeah. happening, and it's constantly being commented. So you yeah. feel like this is actually happening. And a very funny. 
already over the top kind of way. Oh, too. absolutely over the yeah. top. Yeah. I think Half Brick is, is going to be one of those ones. That's, I think in the next year or two, Half Brick is probably going to do their first AAA console title because I think, I think like so. Team Meat and a lot like Samogo, they have some really unique ideas that are good for like bite-sized morsels, but. Even beyond that, you can spend a good amount of time with this game for and sure. just kind of get lost in the the possibilities and outcomes of it all. Yeah, this is a give them like a little start, and then later on, if they do decide to go to some of the like PS4 or something, it's just giving them a starting on something bigger. I think. Absolutely. I, th I, th I think that this is just kind of the starting of something maybe a little bit bigger. And, you know, it's funny that you kind of ended off with this, saying that like, that's this is the starting of something bigger. Really, people, you got to look at the mobile market right now. I mean. You know, most people didn't take it seriously you know, two or three years ago, no. but now it's really becoming an alternative to gaming. Like, you don't even need to have a console anymore. You can get a fantastic gaming experience just out of having a tablet these days. And really, you're gonna see that a lot more from the show where we're gonna start covering all these great iOS games that are coming out because we're at long out of the days of Angry Birds now. We're getting into some real, true experiences now, like true gaming experiences that rival the, plot, the consoles and PC even. Oh, absolutely. And, and just in the nature of your playing on a hotel, it's a very, very, best way I can describe it, it's a very intimate way to play a game. You're, you're holding in hands and you're literally, you're, you're, you're not using a controller, you're literally moving in. And, and we've seen how well that works, actually better it works like, with games like XCOM, absolutely. Bastion, like anything that's pretty much three-quarter overhead strategy, or even like the Telltale games like Fables, or Walking Dead arguably work better Absolutely. on a touch screen interface. So you know, just a lot of exciting stuff. Tons of stuff to keep us rolling out episodes in Sin Infinity. So we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back with part three where we talk a little bit about the games we're playing this week. Stay tuned. Back, Joyce is Justice League to part three of Breaking Nose episode two. We uh, got off a huge slate of awesome indie stuff coming out in 2014. Now let's just kind of tone it down a bit. Let's talk a little bit about what we've been playing recently. So let's uh, kick it off with you, Joe. Been, uh, what's been spinning your uh, your discs lately? <laughs> some some really really good stuff. Actually, no disc spinning because I've been all about mobile this week. Really? And uh, first one I got to talk about is this is actually one that you turned me on to that uh, uh, I, I I didn't even really know about it. Sad that actually I didn't get to start playing this soon. That is Hotline Miami. Oh my god, I love this game. For the, I've been playing on, on the Vita. It's available on other stuff, but anyways, so I've been playing on Vita and oh my god. Okay, so this is quite a twisted. Uh, oh man, it, game isn't it? It, 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 it? It's it's very very simple. It's very hard. It's frustrating. It's crazy. <laughs> like seriously, the, in between the one mission, the, the, there's some stuff that, that just it puts a smile on my face. Like you walk into the pizza place and the. For some reason, it's the same guy running the store. It's like the same guy. But you walk in, and he's like, "Here, I got your pizza ready for you." I'm like, "Dude, I didn't even order one." <laughs> and and, and there's one mission where I, I didn't even notice that there was somebody that I actually had to save, and she was laying in, in a bathtub. And I go to leave, and she's like, "Hey, asshole! Like, are you gonna save me?" And I'm like, "Okay, you just called me an asshole. Now you want me to save you? Like, like it's just it's over the top. It, it's 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 a hard game. Like it, it's this is definitely not a, like an arcade kind of game where you're gonna fight. You you're gonna die gruesomely several 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 times. But it, it is just a blast to play this game. Yeah, for anybody who still hasn't played Hot Lava Miami, oh, I mean like set it up for, so what what what's this game about? Like what kind of game is this? Like what what is it about? Uh, it, it, it's uh, you know I think even uh, people that uh, maybe a fan of old Miami Vice. The, the TV show, which uh, going off in a tangent here, that was actually the very first TV show I remember seeing as a kid. <laughs> and uh, it, it, this did kind of draw me to this game, the, the, the whole kind of thing. But it, it, it's it's, it's a, got that eighties feel, yeah, the neon colors, it, it, the, even soundtrack. Right, it, it's a it, it's a very very dark. You know, it, it's a kind of like it's. It's it's it's, it's overhead it's, kind it's, of GTA it's, style, almost. yeah, old school GTA. Yeah, and it, it's just that the levels are very simple, but I mean, Jesus, it is hard, but it is satisfying when you when you, when you do finally pull it off. Though it's like yes, yeah, this game's a grinder. I mean, I, I played through this online. I, I broadcasted this thing. You think I swear during Super Mario Boys? You see me do, oh, do the same room like fifty this. times in a row oh, on Hot Lab Miami. Uh, <laughs> like some of the floors are so well laid out and well strategized. It's really a, a grind to have to get through these levels. It's so old school and it's hardcore challenge. It really almost feels like 
like an overhead Demon Souls in a sec that it's just, it doesn't forgive, the enemies are quick, yeah. and, and the music, man. Oh, you mentioned yeah. the music? That's a nice atmosphere too. It has a disclaimer right on the Vita version, this game is best played with headphones. It's this trippy kind of dubstep kind of yeah. soundtrack. This almost feels like like if David Fincher and, and Terry Gilliam met up exactly. in the 90s and made a video game, this is what would turn out. This is it's a, it's a, it's a gross game, like very gruesome, twisted. Oh, You've got God. the mind control themes, like the yeah. MK Ultra. You're definitely under mind control. You have like the story twists and turns. There's multiple endings. Yeah, and it's cheap as shit. Yeah. Like it, the, the price just came down on Steam to like under three bucks. Yeah. Same thing on PlayStation Plus. Oh man, it, it, it is. It, even if this game was like twenty bucks, I would still have like bought it. Okay. It's just it's just twisted. Yeah. Original. It was from Devolver Digital. They're coming out with Hot Lemonade 2 first on PS4 and then all their platforms. So cool stuff. Another one you're playing this week is uh, second season of Walking Dead. Oh yeah. Episode. There you go, Clementine. Right. Yeah, because uh, now you know it's, it's well, I'm gonna try and keep this fairly spoiler. No spoilers. But uh, it's a uh, it's it's a continuation of uh, of Walking Dead. I mean, obviously this is extremely popular. We all know that the first season was 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 incredible. You're you're starting the second season off. You're Clementine, right? She's uh, she's aged a little bit. She's she's a little bit older, and it, it's uh, they've really uh, gameplay wise, it's very very similar, but they have not refined it. It does because I've been playing it on an iPad, and it feels very very responsive, even more so I think than the first one. And um, one of the this is. Debatable whether this is a spoiler or not, but uh, I will t tell you about that one point in this game where it's sometimes she gets injured, she gets bit, bit by a dog, and you're, you're literally, especially with the touch controls, like I, I was looking away while I did this, she, she gets bit, and you literally have to st stitch, close the, the wound on her arm, and, and like I, as I'm playing it, I'm like pressing the button, I'm going, oh jeez, you know, it, 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 it's a very, very like. The original Walking Dead, it, 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 it's it's such a good, solid game to play. Uh, it's I, I had a blast playing it, and there's still four more episodes to come. Yeah, it's funny you um, mentioned that the very slow, repeated uh, kind of action of her stitching herself. Yeah. It reminds me of the of the part in the first season where you're burying the dog, yeah. and it seems like it, the scene goes one minute longer than it should, but it's really trying to get that emotional impact. And, I, and I, that's why I love about Telltale. It's like they're working with the, the visual video game medium, but they're bringing in the emotion of what comes out of reading a tale. You know, yeah. of, that the stuff that you don't really get in an action film or a, or a movie adaptation or a video game adaptation. They're really bringing that in by by drawing out those emotional moments, you know, by really making you cringe, by making you cry. You know, what's really awesome with these guys is that you know, before Lucky, they did, they did Back to the Future. But they really did, you know, in my opinion, come out of nowhere. To be like a really, really good developer. Absolutely. I mean, they had their underground audience with Sam and Max. You know, yeah. like you said, Back to the Future. I mean, not so much with Jurassic Park. But I mean, with with Walking Dead, though. I mean, it's just it's you know, for most people last year, it was their game of the year. It was fate, game, really. So. It was, it, you take oh. you take a great idea of like having multiple endings, like your choose your own adventure style, but you attach it to The Walking Dead, which in that time it was in its second season, mm -hmm. probably harder than it is now, like with its original fan base. So it was just the marriage of two perfect ideas at the right time, in the right kind of year, 2012, when people were demanding something a bit more sublime, a bit more aesthetic, like Journey and stuff like that. You know, that was the right time for it to come out. And now, I mean, getting into my next game, the one that I've been playing right now, The Wolf Among Us, their, their follow-up to Walking Dead, Telltale, Man, like they're just pushing the envelope. I mean, yep. if you if you this one was kind of flew under the radar. It was I considered it risky when I first heard about it, but I actually got sat down to play some of episode one. Now, man, it's like Sin City meets Aesop's Fables. Yeah, you're you're like this New York like neon bleached environment, like this rundown kind of ghetto, and all the fairy tale characters have been exiled into this burrow. And what's happened now is that they have this thing that they have called Glamour, which keeps them in human form. So now the big bad wolf has been humanized into the, the, the sheriff of the town or whatever. And obviously, you know, he's had a history with the, he's had a really bad history of all these fairy tales, yep. you know, of like, you know, terrorizing three little pigs. Now he has to govern these people yep. and keep them from fighting each other. But here's the added thing. You've got this dystopian thing where, say, the three little pigs who can't, like the characters who can't afford the glamours, which are very expensive, 
they have to go into their fairy tale form and they're forced to go to the farm, which is upstate. Wow. So, like, I haven't even gotten that far into it, but just the language, the, the, this, this is hardcore. Really I mean, there's, there's that. almost like, a, like, within the first five minutes, the lumberjack almost rapes a prostitute. Yeah, what are you, just a very unique. Twisted, story. unique. Oh, yeah, it's... <laughs> Wow, just reinventing the fables. And this was like a DC comic license, but the, the graphics, oh my God, the production design and the combat too, is what I really like what they improved from Walking Dead. Like this kind of new touch-based fluid real-time combat that just feels right yeah. for the actual game you're playing. So great stuff from Telltale. They're also getting, doing the Game of Thrones license now, so they're gonna be doing multiple storylines of that. Yeah. And to kind of wrap it off with kind of like RPG kind of beautiful stuff, I've also been playing Tales of Zillia, which uh, came out uh, just this year for like the PS3. It's been out in Japan for a long time. I slept on this one. I, I'm not really into like the hardcore, like anime, like female protagonist games. And I, and I kind of slept on this one, but then I actually gave it a spin. And man, the fighting system. Like what made it really stand out? The fighting system. It, it, yeah. it feels like they, they took No Mercy for the N64 and threw it into an RPG oh, about magical scientists. So it's cool because you actually fight on, on one axis and you, you, you use directional based attacks to give you different you know repertoire. But then it, it's just, it just with the, the themes, the fighting system, the voice acting, and just the beautiful like anime cutscenes. This one's come down in price a lot. I mean, I got this for 20 bucks on Boxing Day, usually 30 or 40. The PS3, any any generation of PlayStation, it always becomes like the go-to JRPG machine near the end of the generation. And that's what you're really gonna see. Like you already saw in this last year, but I think in 2014 with with Monster Hunter coming out for PS3 and all this other stuff, you're really gonna see the JRPG I think start to solidify within the Western audience. So you know, Tales of Zillia. I mean, if you're into like you know Nino Kuni. Or, or Tales of Symphony, or any of those cool like anime-based RPGs, you gotta pick this one up. It's fantastic. Um, I think that's it. That's a pretty jam-packed episode of Breaking News. We got a lot of great stuff. Uh, all these new shows going on. We got review shows, podcasts. So subscribe yeah. to us on YouTube. You got your blog? I got my blog uh, as always. JoeMoran.blogspot.ca. I'm actually working on one that uh, I'm hoping to actually put out tomorrow. Where I'm talking about uh, how multiplayer games have evolved from uh, you know us sitting on the couch playing games to where, to where we're playing uh, online multiplayer to how things have uh, taken a bit of a change with that, you know, with, uh, with multiplayer gaming where you can even move with some of the Twitch stuff, which is added, added some stuff to, to the multiplayer. It's like a new realm of it, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the virtual yeah. living room experience. It's, it's, it's really, really evolved. I'm, I'm, going into depth about that, so that, that'll be out soon for you guys to look at. What was funny too is that you notice now with like the Wii U having kind of a spike in popularity over the holidays, that whole couch co-op thing is really coming back. Yeah, and that's really nice to see because like, like, like I've said, uh, to, to me, uh, I still consider that true multiplayer. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I've also got my blog, uh, the Alarm Bell Network, uh, .wordpress.com, which is kind of a smattering of cultural topics, so you can check that out video game to topics, music topics. Anyway, I'm Mike Frucios. I'm Joe Moore. Another great episode of Breaking News for the Joystick Justice League. Stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you again soon, guys. Game on. Peace. Peace out. Joyce's. Ah, here we go again. <laughs> I can't see Joyce's just sleep. Play for the outtake real now. <laughs> just think, fuck. Alright. Two episodes, zero mistakes. Three, two, one.